Hello and welcome back. So in the last lecture, we learned what do we mean by authentication and why authentication is required in a web application like the one which we are creating here. So here we are creating a web API application using Nest.js. Now, before we implement authentication for our web API, first we need to have a way to create some users and store them in the database. For that, we have already created an API. So if I go to VS Code, in our project, let's go to source folder. There, we have this user folder. And in that user folder, we have this user controller. And in this user controller, you will see that we already have an endpoint to create new users. Now, usually, when we want to add new users for our application, we do it through a signup process. And for that, we need a signup API. Now, sign up, login, and logout, these are related to authentication. So, what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to comment this endpoint because I don't want to create users by going to this endpoint by making a post request to root URL slash users. Instead, what I want is I want to have a new endpoint. So, let me copy this and let me close this delete user and let me also close this request. So what I want is now I want to create a new endpoint which will handle a post request and that endpoint should be an endpoint for signing up a user and it should look something like this root URL slash auth slash sign up. And with the sign up request, we also want to pass some request body basically the user detail with this request. So for example, I can copy this user detail from here and I'm going to specify it here. So now I want to create new users using this endpoint and not using this endpoint. And that's why I have commented that endpoint. Or actually I have to comment this endpoint. If I save the changes now and if I go to Postman and using this create user endpoint, if I try to create a new user, I should get a response saying 404 not found. Okay, because now this endpoint is not found. It is not present in our application. So this is one thing which I wanted to do. Now what I want is, we also have this auth module here, basically this auth folder. And in that we have the auth controller, auth service, and this auth module file. So now I want to create a new endpoint in auth controller for sign up here you will see we also have a login endpoint but we will talk about it later let's first go ahead and let's first create a new endpoint and i'm going to call this endpoint as sign up okay and here this method it should handle a post request so here i'm also going to decorate it with post decorator now i want to call this sign up endpoint whenever a user makes a request to root url and in our case, the root URL is localhost colon 3000 slash auth slash sign up. Okay. So since for the controller, since we have already specified this auth, this auth will be appended to root URL. But after that, I also want to have this sign up resource. And that I can do by simply passing sign up to this post decorator. Something like this. And now this endpoint, it will be called whenever a user makes a post request to root URL slash auth slash sign up. All right. Now from here, let me save the changes in this file. If I go to user folder and there, if I go to this user service, there you will see that we have already written the logic for creating a user. So instead of writing this logic again in the auth service, in the auth service, I'll go ahead and I will create a method. I'll call it as sign up. This method should run asynchronously. So I'm also going to use this async keyword and I'll also use public keyword before it to make this method public. And from within this method, what we are going to do is we are going to call the create user method of this user service. Basically, we will simply call this create user method. And for that, we will have to inject an instance of this user service inside this auth service. 
and if I scroll up, you will see that we are already injecting an instance of user service inside this auth service. So here I can simply go ahead and I can say this dot user service dot create user. Now, in order to create the user, what we will have to do is we will have to pass an instance of this create user DTO. Okay, so in here for this method, let's specify a parameter. Let's call it as create user DTO and it is going to be of type create user DTO and in order to use this create user DTO we also need to import it from this path all right now we are going to pass this create user DTO to this create user method of user service now we want to call the sign up method from the auth controller so from within this sign up endpoint of this auth controller we are going to call this sign up method of this auth service. So first of all, let me go and let me save the changes here. Let's go to auth controller. And in the auth controller also, we are already injecting an instance of auth service. So here we will say this dot auth service dot sign up. This method is going to run asynchronously. So let's use the await keyword here. And since we want to use this await keyword here, let's me also use async. Now again to this sign up method which we are calling for the auth service it is also expecting an instance of this create user DTO. So again in the auth controller also let's say during the sign up process in the request body we are going to receive a user object and that user object will be of type create user DTO. So here I'm going to specify a parameter create user DTO which is going to be of type create user DTO okay and we are going to get this from the request body so here I'm also going to use at body decorator so we are going to read the user object from the request body and on that we want to apply this create user DTO and now we are going to pass this create user DTO to this sign up method of auth service so what we are doing we are calling the sign up method of auth service in the auth service we are calling the create user method of user service so in this way we do not have to write the create user logic again inside this auth service we are simply reusing the create user method of user service and from here whatever will be returned we want to return it from here and also this create user method it is going to run asynchronously if i go to user service you will see that it is an async method so here we are also going to use the await keyword in order to wait for the response let's save the changes and let's go to auth controller also and from here also we are going to return the response basically we are going to return the user object which we are returning from here the response which we are returning from here you see at this line we are creating a user and that created user will be returned by this save method we are simply returning that user in the response so this returned user we will get in auth service at this line once we have that user we are returning it and we are calling the sign up method from this auth controller so there also we will receive that returned user and we are returning that user in the response with this let's save the changes let's go to terminal and let's see if everything is working as expected so as you can see the application has been built successfully now let me go to postman and now let me close this request let's go to this request where we are going to make a post request to root url slash auth slash sign up because this endpoint is our sign up endpoint and there i'm going to create a new user i'll call this user as john smith 23 so this is the username let's say the email is john smith let's keep the password as test1234 and for the profile i'm going to specify the first name as john last name as smith and the gender is male now here if i make the request let's see what happens so here we have this 500 internal server error response and if I go to terminal, there we can see the error and it says cannot read property of undefined reading create user. And 
this error has occurred at line number 26 of auth service so let's go to visual studio let's go to auth service and there at line number 26 what we are trying to do we are trying to call the create user method of user service and for some reason this user service is undefined now this is because if you remember when we were talking about the different types of dependencies there we also learned about circular dependency so we injected user service in the auth module and we also injected auth service in the user module and in this way we were creating a circular dependency but that circular dependency i have removed from user module if you see here we are not importing auth module at all i have removed it from here but if i go to auth module from there we are using this forward ref and we have learned that we use this forward ref whenever we want to have a circular dependency but now since we are not importing auth module in the user module there is no circular dependency so that's why i can simply remove this forward ref from here because that is not required because there is no circular dependency right now okay let's save the changes here then let's also go to auth service and there when we are injecting this user service there also since previously we had a circular dependency we use this forward ref to inject an instance of user service but now we don't need this so i can simply go ahead and i can remove this forward ref like this with this let's save the changes now let's go to the terminal so our application is building and it has built successfully let's go back to postman and let's try to create this user again also let me go back to postman let me rerun this query so currently you will see we have two users let's go back to postman and let me try to create this user and now you will see in the response you see the status code is 200 that means the user is created you can also see the details of the created user like the username email password profile etc as you can see here and if i go to postgresql database and if i rerun this query you will see that a new user with the username john smith 23 has been created now here if you see when we have created this user we provided the password as test1234 and the same password has been saved in the database so you can see a plain password has been saved in the database for that user saving plain password in database for a web api application is a major security risk and it should always be avoided we should never save plain password in the database that's because if your database is compromised due to a security vulnerability attackers will gain immediate access to every user's password in a readable format and this allows them to directly log into user's account on your application they can try those same passwords on other websites and services because many users reuse their password on other applications so it is possible that a user is using the same password across different applications so the attacker will get access to all those applications using that username and password and this can lead to widespread compromise of their online presence and if the attacker wants he can also sell or leak the password database causing further harm to your users and not only that malicious or even negligent employees or the developers who is working on that application they will have access to the application database and they can also see the username and plain password of all the users and this bypasses any intended security measures because if the developer wants he can use these details with malicious intent and that's why we should never save plain password of a user in the application database instead we should always hash the password first using a hashing algorithm add some salt to it to make it more secure and then save it in the database and we will learn how we can hash a password and add salt to them in order to make them more secure in our next lecture so just understand that instead of saving the plain password like this we should always save a hashed password which is more secure and which cannot be decrypted how we can do that that we will learn in our next lecture now before i wrap up this lecture let's go back to postman 
and I'm going to save this request. So I can click on the save button. I'm going to call this request as sign up and I want to save it in auth folder. Okay, so sign up request is saved here in the auth folder. And now this endpoint, this create user endpoint, it is no more going to work. If I send a request, you will see that we have 404 not found response. Then that's because we have commented that endpoint. So this request is now not going to work in order to create a user. So I'm going to delete this request. All right. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.